Hey gang, before we get started, uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a channel update. So summer's here and I'm gonna be doing a little bit of traveling over the next few weeks. Um, maybe to places where it's not 100 degrees at 3 a.m. But don't worry, the videos are still coming your way. Um, we did plan ahead of time and some videos like this one might be a, a little bit more abridged than usual, but you'll still be getting your stuff. So this is a lightning round video. Uh, these questions come from Patreon supporters who support the channel above a certain tier. This is a perk that comes with supporting at that level. And I wanna take a second to just sincerely acknowledge and thank everybody who supports this channel on Patreon or in the channel memberships. Um, I know I always shout out people at the end of these videos, but I wanted to do it here at the beginning where everybody can see it because not, a, not everybody makes it to the end. Truth is the YouTube algorithm has not exactly been nice to the channel lately. Uh, it's not been showing my videos to nearly as many people as it once did. I'm trying really hard to not become a clickbait monster and uh, you know be really gross just to get YouTube to show my stuff to people, but having said that, there might be some changes that are gonna come around here. We'll see, nothing drastic right now. The point is AdSense revenue is all over the map. Um, it's always been all over the map, but it's been in a huge dip lately. Um, I couldn't do this channel just based on that. It's just way too irregular. I couldn't possibly plan out more than a, a couple of weeks at a time. So the people who support this channel and the channel sponsors are why I'm able to do this. And um, I, I don't think I thank you guys enough. If you don't or can't support directly, I still love you. Um, I appreciate you watching. Hell, if you're watching me right now and haven't skipped forward, you're a hero in my book. I've been doing this for seven years and the only reason I'm still able to do it is because of the support you guys have given me. It truly means the world to me. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to get that out there. Um, but let's get on with this video. Roll that beautiful logo animation. Cole Parker asked, I'm very curious how much money SpaceX has saved reusing the Falcon 9 compared to non-reusable companies like ULA or Ariane Space. Is it really moving the needle in the cost of space flight? I just said Ariane Space. I think it's technically Ariane Space, but uh, nobody's asking for that. So this is a good question actually, and um, it gets complicated. Launch costs are actually pretty difficult to compare because just like the supply closet of a nursing home, there's a lot of depends involved. For example, are we talking low earth orbit, geostationary orbit? Is it private or government customer because different entities have different regulatory requirements that change the cost, etc.? So I could point to various price points, um, but we're really just looking for a general pattern here. I'll link down below to this article from The Visual Capitalist that charts the launch costs of various launch vehicles, and as you can see, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are significantly less expensive per kilogram than the other rockets listed. This is not a complete list of options. Obviously, there's no Ariane Space or Rocket Lab on here, but clearly the cost of launching has gone down over time. I think to me, the best indication that SpaceX is actually shifting things in the space industry is that renewability is now like something other companies are trying to do themselves. Blue Origin's new Glenn will reuse the booster, Rocket Lab's Neutron will reuse the first stage, and they're trying to catch the first stage of the Electron right now. Uh, ULA's Vulcan rocket will recover the engines, making it partially reusable. And of course, if they pull off Starship, it would push launch costs down to just insane levels. Like I I've seen it go down as low as like $600 per kilogram. Uh, even the lowest Falcon 9 numbers I saw were around 3,500. Which is why an anonymous space lobbyist told Politico back in February that his space industry clients are, quote, shitting the bed over Starship. So yeah, as closely as all of us space nerds are watching for the first orbital Starship launch, I guarantee you the other launch companies are watching even closer. John Regal asked, in futurism, is poo the answer to life extension? So yeah, John pointed to this article from a website called Medical Express, but it's referring to um, something from the University of East Anglia, talking about how scientists at the Quadrum Institute at the University of East Anglia have provided evidence from research in mice that transplanting fecal microbiota into, or from young into old mice can reverse hallmarks of aging in the gut, eyes, and brain. They even reversed the experiment, it says here, and they put microbes from old mice into young mice, and it said that the uh, young mice induced inflammation in the brain of young recipients and, de and depleted a key protein required for normal vision. As they say, when you get older, your health goes to shit. So we've always known, or we've known recently anyway, that the gut microbiota actually plays a huge significant role in our health. Um, bacteria are actually far more important to our health than we ever had any idea. But according to this, it says, these findings show that gut macros play a role in regulating some of the detrimental effects of aging, which is kind of a new thing, and open up the possibility of gut microbe-based therapies to combat aging and decline in later life. 
So just to read the quote from the guy who was the head of this study, Professor Simon Carding, uh, he said, quote, this groundbreaking study provides tantalizing evidence for the direct involvement of gut microbes in aging and the functional decline of brain function and vision and offers a potential solution in the form of gut microbe replacement therapy. And it looks like they're gonna be studying this further. It says a new facility for microbiota replacement therapy, which is actually MRT, uh, also known as fecal microbiota transplantation, or FMT, uh, is being built there that'll facilitate trials as well as other trials of microbiota-related conditions. So it looks like according to this study in this article, it is right now only uh, seeing these results in mice, which is always encouraging, but you gotta take it with a little bit of grain of salt, but it looks like they're actually gonna be testing this out in humans. I will be keeping an eye on this. I wouldn't mind uh, taking some young, youngin's poo and putting it in my colon and getting younger in the process. But in the meantime, I'll just take my vitamins. John Regal also said, and in history, mega raptors. Thank goodness for extinction events? <laughs> yes, thank goodness for extinction events. Luckily, we're going through one right now. And he shared a link to this article that's, <laughs> the title is Death Shadow Dinosaur Unearthed in Argentina. Click, please. But no, they found the skeleton of this mega raptor in Argentina that was three stories tall and weighed six tons, and its name was Maip macrothorax. And yeah, that first part, Maip, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but it's derived from an evil mythological figure of Patagonia's indigenous people, a figure that was associated with the shadow of death. And the second part, macrothorax, refers to the enormous expanse of the creature's chest cavity, some 1.2 meters or 3.9 feet wide. That's how big its chest was. So, you know, we had Jurassic Park come out and we were all kind of introduced to the idea of velociraptors. Before that, everybody thought that T-Rexes were the scariest thing. But in uh, Jurassic Park, they kind of were about human size, about human level, maybe about five feet tall or so. Uh, we find out later that most velociraptors were probably about the size of a large dog, so not quite that big. But there have been more raptors discovered over time and the sizes have gotten more varied, not just bigger. They found even smaller ones, but they've found bigger ones, and this one apparently is the biggest one they found so far. It says it measured nine to 10 meters in length and lived about 70 million years ago toward the end of the Cretaceous period in what was then a tropical forest. It says it had two sharp curved claws in the front paws, and each talon was 40 centimeters or 15.7 inches long. It says that Maip was one of the last mega raptors to inhabit the Earth before the dinosaurs went extinct about 66 million years ago, and it's also the southernmost mega raptor ever found, whatever that means. Anyway, that is interesting. Um, I will put the links to that and the, the, the poo transplant thing uh, down below. Mark Hoffman asked, do you think an adequate amount of resources are being allocated to oceanic floor deep sea exploration and documentation? So, you know, they say we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the ocean floor on our own planet. Um, it's probably true. Now, do I think that there's an adequate amount of resources being directed at ocean floor exploration? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. If it's just about learning everything there is to know about the ocean floor, I mean, of course, I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor of learning anything. Um, not sure if it's as important as, say, spending money on clean energy or plastic cleanup. Although we're finding plastic in the Mariana Trench, so that would include it. Now, one compelling reason, I think, to study the ocean floor is to look at how life evolves in, um, in extreme environments like that, like we might find on other planets, like Enceladus has a deep, possibly very deep liquid ocean on it. We might be able to see what kind of life would evolve in that kind of situation. There's probably a lot we could learn about geological processes that we can't really observe on land. I mean, let's face it, there's a ton more ocean floor than there is dry land on this planet. And we could probably learn a lot about how we've polluted the ocean and how it's affected life way down there. Like I said, they found plastic at the Challenger Deep. So to argue whether or not there's adequate resources being put into it, um, it's difficult to say. I mean, it just kind of depends on what you want to get out of it and how important it is to, to society as a whole. But don't worry, I'm sure someday they'll find, you know, oil beneath the Marianas Trench and suddenly we'll be spending a lot of time down there. Mark also asked, what likelihood do you think the war in Ukraine will have on instigating needed advancements in renewable energy implementation? Personally, I feel that it'll result in a greatly missed opportunity that only enacts token changes. Oh, Mark, Mark, cynical Mark. Yeah, you're probably right. So, um, just to make all this about me, as I record this, uh, I just finally, finally got solar on my roof. And uh, there's two takeaways that I can get already from having solar on my roof. One is that the app that connects to the system is awesome. 
Yeah, it shows how much energy you're generating, how much is coming in from the grid, how much you're consuming, and brother, this is a game changer. Like I'm showing you the screen right now, you can see that there's like 2.7, 2.9, 2.29 uh, coming in from the solar panel and 1.7 or 1.2 or so coming out into the grid. Actually, the the, the, the sun's behind a cloud right now. It was at more like uh, closer to like eight or eight or nine kilowatts coming in earlier. Yeah, I've known other people that got solar and talked about how they just immediately became a kilowatt Nazi uh, because they were just obsessed with how much they were pulling out of the grid. Uh, I've, I've started doing that already. I feel like every home electrical system should have this. Like even if you don't have solar, just being able to visualize how much energy you're using is just, it's so helpful. Like without this, all you can do is just look at your energy bill, which doesn't exactly tell you what you're doing and how it affects your bill. And you can't see in real time, like what the AC is pulling or what the lights are pulling and whatnot. Anyway, it, it's, it's all kind of fascinating. Moving on. The other thing that I can take from having the solar on my roof already is just the feeling that comes with being energy independent. You know, my energy bills aren't gonna go up or down according to the whims of a global energy market, uh, at least not to the level that affects me that much. In fact, I talked recently in an OLF about how um, I feel the same way about having an EV right now with the gas prices going through the roof, you know, knowing that global conflicts and energy shenanigans don't affect me like it affects other people. It just makes me feel guilt, lots of guilt. That's what I do with happy emotions. All of that was a very self-congratulatory way of saying, maybe? Maybe, maybe this is the thing that shakes people up, that gets across the fact that, you know, maybe we should have a different energy system than the one that we have, where authoritarian strongmen can spin every industry in the world into chaos on a whim. You know, it's the energy independence angle uh, when it comes to renewables is something that I don't really think gets talked about enough, both on a household, but also a societal level. But I hear you, dude. We, we've seen a ton of crises like this come and go over the years, and here we are, we're still in the same spot, so. Yeah, you could say my enthusiasm is dampened a bit. It kind of makes you start wondering like, what can you possibly do? Like what little thing can you do to help things be more sustainable and better in the world? But one thing you can do is to purchase food from more sustainable and organic farms, which isn't always easy. You got to do a lot of research and go to certain stores or a much simpler option is to sign up for today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fully stocked meal kits right to your front door with recipes created by professional chefs, pre-proportioned with instructions even a dummy like me can follow. It saves time you'd normally spend going to the store and like I said, they buy direct from farmers so it's fresher than what you get in the store and might not even be available in your local store. And the food is seriously amazing, often with flavor combinations you never had before so you discover so many new foods this way like Tunisian spiced meatballs or banh mi bowls. And might I recommend pouring a glass of wine and throwing on a Serge Gainsbourg playlist. You feel like you're just hanging out in an apartment in Paris. And if you are in Paris, um, just cook it, I guess. So if you want to try it and see what it's all about, HelloFresh is offering you guys 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts if you go to HelloFresh.com and enter the code JOESCOTT16 at sign up. And I say this every time, I cannot overemphasize how much food 16 of these meals are. I can't ever get through all of them. Every single one of these meals usually becomes two for me, so it's a lot of food. And you get three surprise gifts, and I could tell you what they are, but actually I can't because they're a surprise. So give it a try, you got nothing to lose. Just enter Joe Scott 16 at sign up, you'll get a ton of food, three free gifts, and you can feel good about what you eat in a lot of ways. So yeah, give it a try, links down below. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this one because uh, Google thinks you might like that one. Check out any of the others that have my face on them, on the thumbnails, on the side mark, whatever. Anyway, go check them out. And if you enjoy them and you haven't subscribed, I invite you to subscribe because I do come back with videos every Monday. That's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening week. Stay safe, stay cool in this heat that we're having this summer. And I'll see you next time. Love you guys. Take care.